Ventilation is the most important skill in airway management. It is more important than laryngoscopy. If you are outstanding at laryngoscopy, but average at ventilation, you are in a bad position because you will encounter patients whose airways present challenges that you did not anticipate and are unprepared for. And these are invariably the patients who are most difficult to ventilate, so this leads to bad patient outcomes and a sad doctor. If you are average at laryngoscopy but outstanding at ventilation, things are good. Because when ventilation is successful, when we stay on the left side of this line, it is a happy day, regardless of what's happening or not happening with laryngoscopy. When you can ventilate, you can take as long as you need, perform as many airway attempts as you want, the pressure is off, it's a happy day. When you cross over to the other side of this line, when you cannot ventilate, you have entered the airway death spiral where you are called upon to perform procedures that you are not comfortable with as quickly as possible. At the same time that your own heart rate is 150, your palms are sweaty, and your underwear is soiled. How many pairs of underwear you buy in your career depends mostly on how good you are at ventilation. Ventilation is the superstar skill in airway management, yet we, we spend a lot of time thinking about, talking about, and practicing laryngoscopy, and nearly ignore ventilation. Furthermore, when we're involved in an airway disaster or an almost airway disaster, we tend to consider this a failure of laryngoscopy rather than a failure of ventilation. We kick ourselves for not being better at laryngoscopy, for not having mastered some new airway toy. But this is like attributing the death of a trapeze artist to having poor mid-air acrobatic technique, rather than recognizing that the problem was his preference to perform without a net. In airway management, your skill in ventilation is your net. The most effective way to ventilate is, of course, through an endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube, both of which bypass the soft tissues of the mouth and larynx to deliver air directly to the trachea. However, oral endotracheal intubation may be difficult or impossible, and performing a tracheostomy or a cricarthrotomy is messy. That leaves two techniques, bag mask ventilation and supraglottic devices such as a laryngeal mask airway. We will not discuss the various percutaneous oxygenation techniques as they do not provide ventilation, only oxygenation if you're lucky. More importantly, I believe in cases where these techniques might apply, your time is better spent trying to get yourself out of the airway death spiral by performing cricothyrotomy. Bag mask ventilation is the most important emergency ventilation technique if for no other reason than it is universally available. It is the cornerstone of emergency airway management, the skill that keeps you out of the airway death spiral, and almost all of us learn how to do it wrong. This is how most of us learn to do bag mask ventilation. It is called the CE technique for the C your thumb and index fingers make around the inlet, and the E your last three fingers make around the patient's mandible. Most of you probably use this technique routinely, and it is the wrong technique. Every month or two, I'm involved in an airway management scenario and observe a provider bagging this way as the saturation falls and everyone is freaking out and losing their mind, which is the easiest way to recognize the start of the airway death spiral. I courageously step in, use the correct technique, and the saturation comes up, and suddenly it's a happy day again. I'll then step out of the way and ask the person who was bagging before me to do it the way that I did it. And it works. The correct technique is easy. So why did we all learn the wrong technique? We learned the wrong technique because we learned to bag mass ventilate from anesthesiologists. Anesthesiologists use the CE technique because they bag patients as part of their routine. And it is important to an anesthesiologist to be able to bag alone, without assistance, so they need to be able to hold the mask to the face with one hand so they can use the other hand to bag. Being able to hold the mask to the face with one hand is not important to an emergency physician. An emergency physician wants to use the technique that is most likely to be effective on the first try because when an emergency physician is doing bag mask ventilation, it is not part of a routine, calm, everyday start to another cholecystectomy. When an emergency physician is bagging, it's usually to avoid entering the airway death spiral. The CE technique is convenient to perform with one person, but it is not the most likely to be effective on the first try, especially for people who don't do it every day. It is therefore the wrong technique for emergency medicine. 
This is the correct technique for emergency physicians, the two thumbs down technique. In the two thumbs down technique, you use both your thumbs and palms to manipulate the mask, and you use both sets of your four fingers to bring the mandible anterior to the maxilla, which is a jaw thrust. There are several reasons why the two thumbs down technique is a superior technique. First of all, both hands are on the mask where they belong. Holding the mask to the face is the skill part of the procedure. Anyone can compress the bag. Your med student can compress the bag. The nurse can compress the bag. If your resuscitation bay is like mine, the patient in the next gurney over can compress the bag. Even an administrator can compress the bag. Anyone can compress the bag. You, the airway expert, need to have both hands on the mask. If it's just you, your patient, and a bag valve mask apparatus on a desert island, you still don't use the CE technique. You use the two thumbs down technique and compress the bag by positioning it in between your chicken wing and your body. When you use the two thumbs down technique, your palms surround the mask and you know exactly when and where there's an air leak. And you have maximum maneuverability to shift the mask to fix that air leak. Lastly, and very importantly, with the two thumbs down technique, you are using the strong muscles of your hands and arms. We evolved, or were intelligently designed, to grasp objects using four fingers against our thumbs. And holding the mandible and jaw thrust takes a fair amount of force, which you will not be able to do effectively for very long with your three weakest fingers. So if you take one message from this talk, please abandon the CE technique and use the two thumbs down technique for bag mass ventilation. But hopefully you'll take more than one message away from this talk. The second most important mistake emergency docs make when doing bag mass ventilation is they do not use oral and nasal airways. The tendency is to slam the mask on the face as quickly as possible but you are more likely to effectively ventilate if you place oral and nasal airways. I promise, if you take nine seconds to insert three airways, you will be glad you did. This means that you should have an appropriately sized oral airway and two appropriately sized nasal airways at the bedside whenever airway management is happening. Use an airway checklist to remind you to do this and to remind you of how to size these devices. Lastly, after you've placed your three airways, apply the mask with a bag detached. This cognitively separates the skill part of the procedure, holding the mask to the face, from the administrator part of the procedure, compressing the bag. Also, the bag just gets in the way. So, to summarize, you've realized that laryngoscopy is going to be harder than you thought. No problem. You come out early, before the patient turns blue. You place your three airways. You separate the bag from the mask. And you place the mask on the patient with two thumbs down technique gathering the mandible and performing a jaw thrust. And then you ventilate. So that's how an emergency physician should perform bag mass ventilation. Except that there is an even better way to perform emergency ventilation, and that is not to use the mask at all. In every airway algorithm, the step before cricothyrotomy is to place a supraglottic device like an LMA. This is often called a rescue device you are using the LMA to rescue you from ineffective bag mass ventilation. This makes good sense because placing an LMA is easier than doing bag mass ventilation and an LMA is more likely to be effective than bag mass ventilation. An LMA delivers air directly to the glottis, so it's close to ventilating through an endotracheal tube, whereas doing bag valve mask ventilation is more like sticking your head out the window of a moving car. So why do we even bother with bag mass ventilation? Bag mass ventilation is harder to do and less effective than ventilating with an LMA. Why not skip the bag valve mask altogether and just place an LMA? There is literature to support this approach, specifically in obese patients, which some of you may have noticed can be difficult to intubate and difficult to ventilate using bag mass technique. I recommend that you keep the right size LMA ready to go, and when laryngoscopy fails, proceed directly to placing an LMA. 
Once ventilation is established through the LMA, you can remove the LMA and commence your second airway attempt or intubate through the LMA. So in summary, remember that in airway management, ventilation is your safety net. The CE technique is great for the OR, but has no business in the ER. Use two thumbs down. Place your airways and separate the mask from the bag prior to commencing bag mass ventilation. Or do even better by skipping bag mass ventilation entirely and moving directly to the LMA. But only in patients without airway reflexes. Thanks to my superstar residents. Email me with any questions.